Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling and this is part two of our Atlantis Right Cyclone Radial Engine C9HE and it's supposed to be a stem kit and 1 12th scale. Now, I need to make a correction. I, I blamed Atlantis for, for a lot of things and uh, in actuality, this is just a kit that Atlantis has acquired and uh, they use the old molds and uh, originally this kit was a monogram kit and it came out in 1959 so now since it's a 1959 kit that makes it what uh, what 64 years old now so uh, it's probably the oldest uh, kit or the a kit from the oldest molds that I think I've ever built. So now we understand uh, <laughs> in the build video, uh, the first video, uh, what these little issues were uh, and that kind of makes sense. So anyway, uh, in order to make this model look more like the real thing, uh, it's all about painting. So in this video, we're going to paint this kit and we're going to do the final assembly and then of course the final reveal. Of course, that's what every, everybody's waiting for. So uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do to make this thing look like the real thing. All right, so the better prepared you are for your painting session, uh, the more successful you're going to be. So I have taken and separated out the parts uh, like the wheels and and things that I'm going to be painting uh, priming in black and then of course we have uh, the parts that we are going to be painting in silver they're going to be separated out as well and I am using the uh, tape uh, that, that's the low tack uh, masking tape rolled uh, sticky side out to help hold those parts and they hold them really secure so I won't be blowing them around inside the, <laughs> inside the paint booth. Now we are going to have to prime all this up as well and, and the thought is that uh, all this needs to be primed in a lighter color. I'm going to be using a, a gray primer for, for everything that we're going to paint metallic and such as our oil pump and sump assembly here, that'll be uh, primed up in the light gray. Our uh, supercharger housing with the accessory drive, we're going to prime that up also in the light gray. Um, we have our carburetor, which we're going to paint that black, so we need to separate that out. And then, of course, we have uh, our front cover, and we're going to paint that uh, in a metallic too, so that'll be in gray. And then when it comes to our engine stand, I am going to repaint this red, but I do want a darker red, so uh, I think the best thing to do is paint it <laughs> primed in black. So for our black primer, we're going to be using uh, Vallejo uh, Surface Primer Black here, and that'll be for everything that we're going to either paint red or tire color or something like that. And then for our metallic, uh, we're also going to be using this Vallejo uh, acrylic primer. Uh, this is the gray, and we'll be spraying all of those parts with that. Now with this all primed up, it really changes the characteristics quite a bit. Um, it's all ready now for us to start adding our actual colors that we're going to be using uh, for the, <laughs> the finished product here. And using this light gray primer is going to really help those metallics kind of shine for us a little bit. So when it comes to uh, these aircraft engines, they, uh, uh, they weren't black. So uh, we're going to be using these two colors here, silver and galvanize. And I've mixed it up to give us this metallic color here. Uh, and it's about a 50-50 mix. So for when it comes to the uh, actual intake, uh, I want that a little bit darker. So we're gonna we're gonna start doing some masking. Now we do have to wait for our acrylic paint to dry, and it, as you can see, that acrylic paint is really nice. It's nice and uh, and shiny. <laughs> so um, we are gonna mask off around that housing, and we're gonna be spraying it with this metallic charcoal here, and that's a much darker metallic color, and I think it'll really add uh, to the different metallics that we've got going on here for this engine. And as you can see here, that looks really good. Uh, 
that's it for this assembly. So we can go ahead and start pulling off uh, all of our mask on it. I don't, I don't like to leave mask tape uh, attached to painted surfaces for a long period of time. Uh, we can get adhesive that can stick, and we don't want that. And that is the difference in the shades that we have going on from our cylinders and crankcase to that, uh, um, we're going to call it the intake manifold, but uh, that's kind of what it looks like. So here we have some pictures of some real aircraft engines, and you can see that they've, they've used a dark gray. Now, I've seen some with lighter grays and blue grays and, and what have you for the center portion here of our crankcase uh, cover. And uh, so we're going to kind of try to replicate that because I really like the looks of that. So that'll be the forward section here for the crankcase and the uh, supercharger housing. And we're going to start off mixing some paint. And that'll be that charcoal and just a little bit of black, about three dots of black <laughs> in it there. Because that charcoal color is, is about as dark a gray as I got if, if I don't go into a panzer gray. And that's what we come up with, and I think that's pretty good. That's a nice, rich, uh, dark gray. So that rear housing and the front housing should look pretty good sprayed in that. So we did uh, not only the front housing, as you can see here, and that is a really nice gray. I like that. But we also did the rear housing and also our oil sump and pump. And we also did the center section of our wiring harness because that is actually the front of the crankcase. So uh, you need to paint that uh, as well because it should be more or less one unit there. And then, of course, uh, we have our carburetor sprayed up in black. And we'll just leave that alone. Uh, we'll do some detail painting on that in a little bit. Now we have our propeller here all primed up, but... Uh, uh, looking at some photographs, there are different colors for the hub and what have you. Uh, before we get to that, though, we're going to have to spray everything here in this metallic silver. And that will really, really look good and give us a, uh, uh, a really nice metallic look there, especially for our prop blades in our, in our center section. And these uh, craft paint metallic acrylics, they, they really spray nicely, and it really looks, <laughs> it really looks good. Um, I'm kind of impressed with that, but we do need to do a little bit of work to this. Um, oh, uh, also, uh, I did spray up the uh, the axle assemblies there for our engine stand as well as the data plate. So that's all done in the metallic silver. So, you know, while you're spraying, spray everything you can. Now back to our propeller. Uh, these blades, uh, we're going to leave those for now uh, in that nice metallic silver, uh, but we do need to paint the hub. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask off the hub section, and we're going to be painting it a different metallic color. And we're also going to leave the center uh, of the hub there, uh, a metallic silver. Uh, I think that looks really good there. So in some of the reference photos, they were uh, a metallic color. And some of them were just painted a different, you know, white or red or black or something. But uh, we're going to leave ours silver. So we're going to mask that off. And here we are. We're all protected from overspray. And now we can get back to <laughs> uh, working on our propeller. My pencil, of course, uh, was because it's a rather large hole here in the center of the, <laughs> the propeller. Uh, I kind of wedged it in there with a... Uh, with a toothpick. So the color I'm going to use for the center section of our hub is going to be the same color that we used uh, on our, uh, we'll call it the intake manifold. So that's that darker metallic color and that should look pretty good. And these acrylics, they, they dry rather quickly. Uh, of course you can speed it up with a little bit of a hair dryer there. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and pull this mask off. Uh, and reveal and make sure that they, we don't have any spots that we need to touch up. So that looks good. Uh, I'm kind of liking how that's turning out. But uh, I think we need to do something else along the lines of uh, uh, spraying on our propellers. So what we're going to do is mask it off so that the leading edges of our each, each one of our blades, uh, we're going to paint that in black. So that'll be flat black. 
and there we are. Just like magic. So I, I sprayed this with the Vallejo Black, and it looks really good. I also masked up, and we painted the uh, center hub. Now, the very ends of those, uh, of those blades, we're going to be painting those red because they are cutaways. Once that has dried enough, we go ahead and cover that up, and we're only going to leave uh, open uh, the items that we're going to be painting red. And while we spray paint this, we'll go ahead and spray paint our, our engine uh, stand as well. So I'm going to be using this uh, craft paint. Um, this is the True Red. We'll mix that up for our airbrush, and we'll spray uh, not only our engine stand, but also our prop. And here we go. Let's go ahead and do that little reveal thing there. We'll get this masking tape off here and see if we have any little touch-ups to take care of, which is probable. I don't expect too many, I hope, but we'll see what this really looks like. And it's starting to look pretty good. I always like that revealing part there. So this is all the spraying done, I think. So our propeller's all sprayed up. We'll do some... Uh, Maybe a little bit of touch up here and there. There's a little bit of overspray in the center section. So, going back to our engine, uh, these intake tubes should be a different color. So what we're going to use here is uh, charcoal gray, and we're just going to paint that on by hand. Uh, all of our spraying is, is done, so it's time to do this detail painting. Uh, one of the problems that I'm running into, though, is that uh, the paint really doesn't want to stick. Uh, it's just I'm just kind of smearing it around there. It's really hard to get it to stay on that really slick surface there where we painted it with the metallic. So I think the best thing to do is kind of kind of give that paint uh, something <laughs> something to grab onto. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this Model Master Acrylic Flat Clear. Uh, we will just spray those tubes uh, and uh, pretty much the whole thing uh, with this. I'm really just going to concentrate on those uh, intake tubes so that uh, it'll give our flat uh, charcoal gray uh, much more uh, footing to adhere to it so that it's easier to paint. And that flat clear uh, dries pretty quick, so it's not that big of a deal as far as waiting for it. It dries almost instantly, to be honest with you. And it is really helping to get this paint to stick, but I still have to go back in and uh, put a second coat on these pipes so that everything is nice and uniform. I'm not worried about brush strokes or anything like that because these craft paints, they do uh, uh, dry nice and even. Uh, without any strokes. Now you can see that one pipe has not been painted yet so that you can see the difference in the contrast there. So that's coming out pretty good. So next up I'm going to use this Vallejo German Panzer Gray to paint our uh, pushrod tubes. So all we're going to do here is just paint the long sections and we'll leave the uh, little sleeves or couplers, uh, we'll leave them uh, in that uh, metallic that we sprayed onto the entire uh, assembly. And while we're doing some brush painting, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and fill in our uh, rubber tires. Now you could also do these tires with just a metallic edge on them to simulate a, uh, a metal wheel, but I, I think I, I like the black as a contrast, so I'm going to paint mine with, with rubber tires on it. Now when it comes to our ignition wires, uh, this center section that I'm painting right now is uh, I'm using the uh, Model Master uh, Acrylic Silver to hand brush this in. Uh, it's, it's a shielded wire which kind of protects it of course from damage uh, and wear. Uh, so we're just going to paint that center part in with that uh, uh, acrylic silver paint and being very careful there, trying to get it as round as possible. <laughs> so if you get your brush angle in, uh, you can actually paint a pretty good circle. You don't have to get all the way up into the groove of it there. Um, and next up, these are the clamps. 
that holds it to the push rod tubes and then of course we're going to start doing all the fittings and everything we'll do that all in silver as well and I did paint the uh, the solenoid or not solenoids but coils that are on top of the cylinders I painted them silver too but I think we're going to change that so we're coming back in with Vallejo black here and paint our ignition wires uh, now, I don't have much hope that this paint is going to, all of it <laughs> at least, uh, stay in place because the material that this harness is made out of uh, does not like to hold on to anything, to be honest with you. And so I imagine that's pro some of it's going to peel off uh, during assembly. So we'll have to go back in and do some touch-up. But we'll get the majority of it, uh, hopefully the majority of it anyway, will we'll stick in place uh, during assembly. So I decided just to use standard gray and paint the center sections of uh, each one of these uh, uh, coils, ignition coils or whatever they are, uh, just to give us more contrast there for the final assembly. Now going back to our photographs that we have, uh, you can see that all the bolt detail on these engines, they are not painted. So... I think that's going to look really good if we do go go in, and this is kind of a uh, a dip into madness here. So I started painting these uh, uh, the bolt heads and and nuts and studs uh, all with that metallic silver, and that'll really help these items stand out against that dark gray. As you can see here on the back of the, the section of the engine. Uh, we've done some detail painting, some black and some bolt detail, and also on our front cover. Now, it takes quite a while to paint all these, uh, and uh, I think it's really, really going to turn out really good. Of course, we painted our output shaft as well, um, and here is our oil pump and sump assembly, and a little bit of detail there, some black and some bolt detail on that coupler, so that's going to look good. And we did some other detail painting on our carburetor, mix of grays and silvers, and then I used copper for some of these control rods on it. Um, so I, th I think it's really going to uh, pop a little bit. Now, that might not be exactly true to life, what color those items may have been, but considering that that carburetor is black, I think that'll really bring out those details. So now we're going to prepare everything uh, with this Vallejo uh, gloss acrylic varnish. And that'll help us with uh, some panel liner because we need to use panel liner to help bring out some of these details. So now we do need to set this aside and let everything dry completely. It's dry to the touch right now, but we don't want to be uh, putting solvents and stuff on all these parts with uh, our next part of the process so we'll set that aside and then we'll go ahead and start working on our engine stand because we're going to be needing that uh, when it comes to uh, uh, having our engine finished it's got to have somewhere to sit so uh, while that paint cures on the engine and the our other engine parts we're going to go ahead and fit uh, uh, our casters here so these have a really tight fitting uh, piece that goes on that holds them into place and if we do this right uh, they should swivel so I do need to clean some paint out and then we're just going to check the fit some of them are a little bit tighter than others but I do want a friction fit there and then the next thing we're going to do is check all of our wheels make sure that we can get them on and they do fit fairly loose or loose enough anyway that uh, we shouldn't have to do any cleanup but we do want to make sure that we turn the the wheels that have those horrible sink marks in them uh, from the molding process we're going to turn those to the inside so that uh, <laughs> they can't be seen and we don't have to worry about it so we're just going to carefully select uh, which side we want in and out so we are going to use uh, the medium CA glue for attaching our wheels. Uh, we just put a little bit on the inside of the hub surface there where the wheel will press up against it. And then we can go ahead and set our wheels into place, uh, doubly making sure that we're not gluing them with those horrible sink marks towards the outside because that's what we wanted to avoid to, uh, to begin with there. 
And we can go ahead and put the other side on as well. And that looks good. We just want to make sure that everything is pressed up nice and flat. We don't want any wobbly wheels here. And now we can go ahead and affix these to the engine stand. And those little collars uh, that we fitted first of all, that we can go ahead and press those into place. And I think maybe I'll come back later and uh, uh, maybe take some red paint there and just paint the tops of those stems that are sticking out on those retaining columns uh, so that they're not so bright. So next we can fit uh, the tilting uh, section uh, of our engine stand into place. Now there are two different size pins, so they're, they're only going to go in uh, whichever side that they're actually sized for so that you can't get them backwards. And here for the retainers, uh, for that rotating part of the stand, you can see that they are different sizes. And we can just take and press those into place. And they have enough friction fit that uh, there is no glue needed there. I mean, if you feel, feel free to go ahead and glue yours into place if you, if you so desire. But uh, these uh, fit snug enough that uh, we really don't have an issue with it. So we do have two locking pins for the uh, tilting part of our engine stand, and it's really, really tight. So I'm just going to clean those out, uh, probably the uh, multiple layers of paint <laughs> that's in those holes um, is keeping it from, from going in. Also, it's not a great fit. Um, probably should have checked this before, and I, and I didn't. But uh, it doesn't go in all the way, but I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. So I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I'm just going to kind of leave those alone. Uh, you can trim yours down, uh, but you can see that the pin does go in far enough to where it, it actually engages. So uh, it's not a big issue. Now, one of the things that uh, Atlantis slash monogram <laughs> tells us to do is use a little bit of uh a thread or something here to attach uh, these uh, pins so we don't lose these retaining pins here to keep it everything locked into place. So I do use a little bit of CA glue there once I tie my knots. That way uh, it doesn't untie itself over time and they'll stay into place. And there we are. We have our uh, little piece of thread there holding um, <laughs> everything into place so that we don't lose those. And that's our stand finish. Now we're going to leave the data plate off the front for, for a bit until we actually get the engine mounted. So now our engine parts have had plenty of time to dry with that gloss clear coat and we'll go ahead and start using some panel liner. Now these cylinders, since it's an air-cooled engine, they do have these deep grooves and we want to kind of accentuate that and bring those to bear uh, by using this panel liner to get those to uh, th those ribs to really stand out. And this will give our engine uh, more depth. Now I'm just showing this one cylinder um, that I'm doing here because uh, we have we have the other eight that are already attached to the engine uh, to do. And as you can see there, that's kind of what we're getting, and that's that's going to look pretty good. Um, really brings out those cooling fins there. So once everything dries uh, with our panel liner we can go ahead and start our cleanup. So we'll just start off here with uh, using a cotton swab or a q-tip or uh, earbud or <laughs> whatever else you want to call them and we can start cleaning up uh, the excess panel liner that we've got uh, on the model. This is pretty much the same thing that we do on uh, uh, just about any model. Uh, that way the uh, uh, any any spots or anything that uh, may detract from, from the appearance, we can go ahead and take care of that now. And you do want to take a good look at everything and make sure that you got everything cleaned up. And as you can see, that panel liner really, really does the heavy lifting when it comes to uh, the looks of those cylinders. And we're going to go ahead and seal everything up once we're satisfied with it with this Vallejo matte varnish. 
Uh, this is an, a 100% a acrylic based, water based, and they even recommend the thinning of this with just water uh, if you so desire to thin it. Now with that done, and all of our parts sprayed with that mat, uh, we're going to start our assembly. Uh, I do give this a little while to dry before we start. Uh, the CA glue, we're going to lay that down right where that wiring harness is going to make contact with the crankcase. And next up, we're going to use Tamiya's thick cement and just apply that to the inside edge of uh, the engine front cover here. Now, we want to be sure that uh, we're not applying it so close to the edge that uh, it squeezes to the outside. If there's any squeezing going on, we want it to go inside, not outside. So uh, be careful when you put that thick cement on. So it pays to be organized when you get ready to do this because with that CA glue, we don't have long to fool around with this. So we need to get our parts together. And that's why we put the glue on the front cover there. Uh, so if there was any CA glue uh, squeeze out, see we're using, we're using that, that front cover part to squeeze our harness section down uh, and nice and flat to the actual engine block. So a little bit of pressure and we'll let everything set up for us. And in a few minutes time, we're, we're ready to go. Um, we're gonna apply a little bit more of that CA glue on the contact areas where the actual oil sump uh, is uh, making contact there with the intake manifold. So I'm just gonna put that CA glue there uh, right where that uh, tank is going to sit and then we'll be able to put our tank in. Now this is where we got to kind of finagle this <laughs> up underneath uh, that intake tube and then we'll just get it into it right there where its locating tabs are and then we've got to press the front portion of it into the front cover and we'll make sure that we get it pressed down nice and tight there because that CA glue is not going to wait for us. And then for the front, we'll just throw in a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, and that'll hold everything into place for us. So now our pump and sump is uh, secured to the model. Next up, we have that one last cylinder that we left out uh, so that we could get that oil sump and, and, and pump into place. And I am using a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin to soften up any paint that might be down in those uh, uh, recessed holes where the tabs that are on the bottom of our actual cylinder uh, are going to go so we don't have anything holding us off. And it is a tight squeeze, but it does pop into place. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin right at the pipe and that will do more than enough there to hold that into place for us. So there we are. Finally, all of our cylinders are in, and now we can go work on uh, all these harnesses. So I've, I've already put all of the little uh, uh, brackets that attach to the pushrod tubes into place, and now we're just sitting, and, and this is just a friction fit, uh, our coils into place there. Once we get our coil snapped in, the uh, plug wires, uh, they just, they've got a little ball on the end of them, and they just set right in where the, uh, the actual spark plugs would be on the engine. And there are two plugs per cylinder. And uh, I do the back first, and then I go back to the front, and then we just push those into place. And you don't need to use any glue or any cement or anything. Now, from fooling around with this wiring harness, uh, there are some sections of paint uh, that has popped off, and uh, you can see the plastic showing through in a couple of places, and we'll just go back in with our black and our uh, metallic uh, silver and touch all that up. Now when it comes to the supercharger housing, we're going to do it the same way that we did on our front cover. Just putting that Tamiya thick cement into place there. And remember, now we want that cement to push inside the part and not outside. 
because we have a lot of bolt detail going on around this part and we don't we don't want any of that glue uh, interfering with that and now all we got to do is align the part up and simply press it into place and if we did everything right <laughs> this it'll stay together which is uh, it's always best not to have the uh, back section of your engine fall off so I'm just going to press it into place here and eh, give it about 10 or 15 minutes and then we can go on with uh, the rest of the assembly. So we do have a part of our wiring here. Now this is for uh, from the magneto uh, to our wiring harness and it does kind of just snap into place. It's a ball connector on the end and uh, uh, the, the way it's made, you got that 90 degree angle on it there. So there are two of these tubes. This is the longest one that goes from the magneto to the front of the engine there. So we're going to put that one into place. And uh, just like on our wiring harness, if we have uh, any paint that comes off, we'll touch that up after we get these things installed. Uh, for our oil sump, there is a line that goes... Um, from the tank, I guess it's a scavenge line, and uh, it just presses into place. Now the elbow goes down, and then we kind of bend this part around and stick it into whatever that, that pump assembly is there. I don't know how many pumps there are on this thing, but uh, uh, quite a few. And it is a really tight fit. Um, I do have to really wiggle and get that to go up inside the uh, the hole that it's supposed to go into and of course we're gonna lose some paint along the way here uh, because this material uh, once again it's, it's the same as the uh, wiring harness on the front of the engine uh, it doesn't really hold well to any paint and it doesn't matter what kind of paint you you actually put on it so as you can see there I got little flakes coming off and we'll we'll just touch that up and there we are with those tubes in place. One's the harness from the magneto and the other one is a scavenge tube. So those are all done. Looks good. So next up we have our carburetor to put on. Now we, in our first video, we cut away the alignment tab that's on there because we had to flatten those surfaces. So we are using super glue or super glue, CA glue, same thing. Uh, we just don't have much time to work with it, so we need to really get this into place and lined up quickly before it actually grabs hold. And Because once it does, it's, it's pretty much there. And there we go. Our carburetor's attached. So, it looks good. I, I like the detail that we got going on there. So, this, this model has been uh, pretty much an exercise in metallics and grays as far as paint goes. So we do need to fit our propeller. The, the hub fits nicely on the bare plastic, but once we get paint on everything, like our output shaft, um, it, it doesn't want to really seat, and we don't want to get it all stuck on there because uh, the intention here is to leave that propeller where we can either display it with it on or with it off while it's on the stand. So we're just going to sand that out until we get a... A, a decent fit there. So now we're going on to the thick Tamiya cement once again. Now there are holes uh, that are in the, um, we'll call it the, we've been calling it anyway, the intake manifold uh, for our intake tubes there. And that is a major mounting point also for the engine to whatever framework it's going to go in in the aircraft. In this case, it's going to go on the stand, so this thick cement will give us the best opportunity to uh, get that actually located and everything pressed down into place. So we're going to mount this on the stand, and those pins that are on the stand are fairly long, so we need to line all those up and just press them in. And going to need to hold it a little bit there until that glue actually uh grabs hold of it and just be patient with it 
And once it does, we can rotate the engine forward there a little bit. And that's, that's it uh, all set up, ready to go. So we do have some water slide uh, decals. And I start off using scissors on this thing. And uh, uh, then I quickly realized that because of the colors and the reflection that I was getting off of it, it was kind of difficult to see what I was doing. And since these are all straight edges on this uh, data plate, I think the best thing to do is use a steel rule, line it up with the edge, and we're just going to trim it off because it is just a rectangular piece and we don't want any excess carrier film to lap over uh, this edge because we have a recessed uh, uh, section of that data plate, the, the actual uh, plate itself where this decal is going to go. So with it all trimmed up, we're going to check the fit and make sure that it goes in place. And it does. Nice and neat. So on to a little bit of uh, micro saw or micro set, I should say, uh, to help it stick. And it's just water slide decals. Just dip it into water and slide it off onto the plate. And it goes right into place right where we want it to. Uh, and then I just put a little bit more of uh, uh, micro set around the edges and any air bubbles or anything we can just roll those out so that fits nicely on to our data plate so uh, right there on that oil pump and sump assembly there uh, is where our data plate goes so we just need to line it up and <laughs> of course these parts aren't uh, exactly square uh, so I'm not going to worry about it too much I'm just trying to get it uh, kind of even there I, I use the ruler here to measure it from the joint where it uh, connects up to the front cover and as long as it's straight with that I'm, I'm going to be happy with it so we're just going to go ahead and roll this out and uh, it should be fine so with our decals nice and dry uh, we can go ahead and mount uh, uh, that data plate that goes on to the actual engine stand. So I'm going to use con or, uh, CA glue here for that and just carefully put that into place. If I can see what I'm doing. There we go. And get it pressed in. And we'll let that dry. Now we only have one more thing to do, is just slip our propeller into place. Now we're not going to glue this because uh, if we would like to display it without that propeller, it'll be removable. Okay, so post-build review, I'll give you my little bit of input. Uh, Atlantis markets this thing as a STEM kit for 12-year-olds uh, or older. And I really don't think that uh, this is the kind of kit for a 12-year-old. Unless, of course, you have one of those exceptional 12-year-olds. And they do exist. They are out there. So uh, that is always a possibility. But it does have some shortcomings. But now if we go back and we consider that this kit first came out uh, on the market in 1959 under uh, Monogram, uh, it's actually a pretty good kit. There's plenty of material here for an experienced modeler to work with and you can make a, uh, a fairly good looking uh, representation of the Cyclone 9 uh, out of this kit. Uh, I enjoyed actually building this kit even though it did give me a couple of challenges here and there uh, but it wasn't it wasn't too bad. <laughs> I, I've had to build worse so it's it's actually a, a fairly decent kit. The, the bolt detail uh, on this kit is a, uh, outstanding considering uh, when I guess these molds were originally uh, uh, made and there's more than enough material here for an experienced modeler that would like to possibly go in and do some scratch building and <laughs> replace that horrible wiring harness and and also those uh, uh, tubes that go from the uh, accessories on the rear of the engine towards the front of the engine. Yeah, all of that could be redone 
and uh, you could have even a better looking model. But I, I think it came out pretty good. Uh, you guys can let me know in the comments uh, what you think of this build. Um, I enjoyed it, but like I say, I don't think that it's for a 12-year-old. <laughs> So with that, uh, I'd like to say thank you to uh, all of my subscribers. It's because of you guys that I keep making these videos, and I hope that you enjoyed this one. And if you are new to the channel and not a subscriber, I hope today I earned your subscription. And if you have any questions about the build that maybe I may have skipped over and didn't uh, didn't cover fully or give enough information about, uh, feel free to contact me in the comment section and I'll answer any of the questions uh, that you have on the kit. So until next time, guys, uh, you stay safe.